Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor. I'm a Sony Imaging Ambassador and I'd like to talk to you about touch operation on Sony Alpha cameras. Now the features do change depending on what you, uh, model you have, so not all of the features I'm going to outline here will be available on your camera. Now the first thing uh, in order to be able to proceed is just check that you've got touch operation switched on on your camera. Now there are reasons that you will want to switch touch operation off, uh, which is what I'm going to cover in the next couple of slides. So you'll find this in the uh, setup to menu. Um, now you, it is possible that you will probably want to get quick access because you do want to uh, enable and disable this uh, function. So I would recommend if it isn't already assigned to a custom button or custom key, uh, put it in the FN menu which is my preference or put it into my menu. Now um, one of the things that um, some people encounter with touch operation and they're not completely aware how this happens is when they raise the camera to the eye they're looking for the spot AF area and they're always finding it in the bottom typically right hand corner of the screen and uh, the reason for that is your nose has touched the uh, the monitor and it's put the AF point into that corner. So uh, one of the reasons that we do want, want to disable touch operation or modify some of the settings is so that stops happening. Now um, there is a, another menu that controls the nature of touch operation and unfortunately Sony have positioned this many many pages away from where we switch touch operation on and off. This is custom operation to menu. Now this is the function of touch operation. Now um, there we can change the nature of the touch operation. Typically we have a touch shutter but only on some models. Typically the A6400 and the Alpha 6600 have a touch shutter feature. Some of the full frame cameras don't have that op operation. But we do have um, a touch AF that's touch autofocus and we also have touch tracking on the latest model cameras. Now you're not going to find that touch tracking if you if you have the older lock on AF um, functionality such as on the A7 III, A7 R3 cameras. But this uh, function of touch operation is an important menu to visit. Now, because we can't assign this to the FN key, uh, for reasons better known to Sony, I would really recommend that you put it into the My Menu setting. And while you're at it, you might as well put the, uh, put the touch operation uh, alongside it so you can control both in the same menu tab. Now, um, there is a third setting that controls touch operation. This is really why I'm making this movie. It's, uh, it's more than just switching it on and off. We have touch panel and touch pad uh, operations. Now, when uh, Sony are talking about the panel, they're talking about your rear monitor. And when they're talking about the pad, they're talking about the finder or uh, EVF. Now, it is possible to use the monitor to guide a spot AF point around the screen when the camera is at our eye. And this functionality changes on the latest model cameras and I'll be covering that as well. Now the first thing that um, you will find very useful, and this works in movies or stills, is when we have continuous autofocus selected and we want to uh, use touch AF as one of those op operations, not touch tracking but touch AF, we can simply tap the monitor on the on the back of the camera and decide where we're going to pull focus to. This is especially useful for um, when you're shooting movies just to say okay I'm uh, photographing uh, this uh, young woman on the left here now I want to touch the screen and pull focus to the woman on the right. So this is a very useful feature. You can also control the speed uh, when we're shooting movies of how quickly that pulls focus from one to another so we can slow it down or speed it up. Okay, so the touch tracking is perhaps uh, my favorite uh, feature for touch operation on the later model cameras. Basically every camera that was released in 2019 and later has this touch tracking facility. It was also backdated for the A9 camera. Now typically I would be using uh, IAF when I'm shooting this sort of portraiture work um, but where we've got very dark sunglasses there is a risk that the camera will just uh, jump to the closest thing in the focus area. Now typically I will be using zone or wide so I would get the trombone sharp but not the guy 
playing it. So the ability just to um, uh, lower the camera and uh, touch the back of the screen on his Ray-Ban uh, sunglasses allows me to pull focus exactly where I want the focus to be. Now there are instances where uh, IAF doesn't kick in, um, even when we've got that um, uh, wide or zone AF, just because of the nature of the face, maybe shade, or in this case uh, the face makeup and perhaps the peak cap is uh, stopping that from happening. So the ability just to uh, touch where you want the camera to focus is exceptionally uh, important. Otherwise without the IAF uh, kicking in, it's just going to jump to that foreground um, uh, platform card that this guy is holding at this demonstration. So another uh, useful way is when we are uh, designed to track, all you have to do is touch your main subject. The camera will then follow that uh, across the screen. Now there is going to be an instance where we now want to track something else in the screen. So we need to cancel that touch tracking. Uh, you'll notice um, when we're looking at using the rear monitor, we'll have a little icon in the upper right hand corner. This allows us to just touch that icon and the, uh, the focus tracking is cancelled. Alternatively, we can just press the center button in the control wheel and that will also cancel the tracking. Uh, we're now free to touch uh, the next subject and start tracking the second subject. Okay, so that's a, a very useful uh, feature to be able to cancel quickly, reacquire a second subject and start tracking that. Now some of my favorite instances when, when I am using the wide or zone is um, th uh, this touch tracking will override that wide zone and allow you to uh, push deeper into your subject. So that again, we don't uh, focus on the th thing that is front and center in that focus area. So again, I can just uh, touch this little pocket camera this guy is holding and then the camera will follow that little pocket camera around the screen so I can move the subject can move and tracking will take over from there. Another great feature for touch tracking is if we have a bird sitting on a post or in, in a tree, we can just touch that bird and when it does uh, take to the wing, uh, the camera will track that across the screen. Just be sure that you have the focus set to continuous uh, so the tracking can uh, take effect there. We are able to use the EVF or Finder for moving the focus point. Now on some of the cameras we can't do touch tracking. Okay, so we have to use Touch AF. Now this is uh, useful where perhaps the subject isn't moving and we just need to control which precise area we want the camera to focus on. And so this allows us uh, with the camera at our eye and a spot AF, one of the many spot AF uh, options uh, implemented, we can then just uh, put our thumb on the monitor and move that um, spot AF point to exactly the right area we want to pull focus on. Remember the camera does like vertical edges, which is why I've just moved this focus area to that part of the shell in order to, to focus quickly. Touch tracking has been implemented uh, for the latest model cameras and I expect that uh, future cameras in 2020 will also acquire this feature. So we're talking uh, cameras like the A7R4, the A92, uh, they have a new feature for touch tracking when using the electronic viewfinder. When we've enabled touch tracking with those later model cameras, we can simply put our thumb onto that monitor uh, move um, uh, an orange crosshair or target onto the subject we want to track. When we let go of our thumb off the monitor, it starts tracking that point. So this is a great way of again overriding wide or zone and moving in and, and picking a specific spot in the scene. Especially useful when that subject is a little bit deeper because there are obstacles in the foreground. So uh, as I said, very useful um, when I'm typically uh, at say do at a motorsports event. Most of the time, the vehicle or a bike that is in the foreground is the one that I am tracking. But in this case, uh, I want to target uh, Mark Marquez, the world champion. He's the one to watch, and he might be uh, doing uh, some sort of overtaking on this uh, hairpin bend. So I'm just going to uh, move my thumb over to that uh, left side of the screen, uh, let go, and it'll start tracking the rider that I want to focus on. 
As I said, as soon as I let go of my thumb, uh, it'll start the tracking and I can cancel that at any time by pressing uh, the center uh, button uh, in the control wheel to cancel that. There are um, some other um, ways we can fine tune this workflow when we're using the pad, uh, when we're using the electronic viewfinder and we're using the monitor to pull the focus, and that is to control the operation area. Now, it, um, basically, we can basically uh, reduce the um, the starting point for operation area just to one section of the monitor, and this is typically the right hand side or the upper right hand side of the monitor. So if we do accidentally touch the monitor uh, as we're moving the camera to the face, it ignores that touch. Okay, so we, uh, we are, in order to start the, uh, the movement of that focus point, we have to start on the right or the upper right hand side. I think this is a very useful feature and stops accidentally starting to move the focus point. The other way we can control that is um, by choosing absolute or relative position. Now absolute means that we have to start on the right hand side of the screen but if we're focusing on the extreme left hand side we have to move our thumb all of the way to the left side of the monitor. So you might find that as a little bit of a stretch to get your focus point to the extreme left hand side. If you're experiencing that as a problem then you can choose the uh, the relative position option. This operates now more like say a mouse on a trackpad where you can uh, move the mouse over a little bit then lift the mouse and then do the same movement a second time and keep edging the focus point in this case uh, to a particular position. So you don't have to be moving your thumb across the entire screen. You can just make a series of shorter strokes with your thumb to move that um, uh, uh, focus point um, around the screen. Just when you thought that uh, probably there isn't anything else I can cover, touch operation actually works in manual focus as well. Now it's not going to kick the camera into autofocus for you, but one of the things that it will do is if you just double tap the screen, uh, and, and it's specific to which area of the screen you double tap. So double tapping um, allows you to magnify the view. You can actually then uh, move a, a finger or a thumb over the screen and then change the relative position of the area you want to magnify and therefore fine-tune your focus. So if uh, this is the first time you've watched one of my movie tutorials and I, I have hundreds of them uh, to bring you up to speed, just also notice that uh, I have a website www.markgaylor.com uh, this is the portal that I will allow you to download free ebooks for your camera, and uh, you've also got access to lots of other ebooks, uh, color management and post production editing. It's a good resource. It's all free. You can make a donation if you find them very valuable, and I would appreciate that because uh, I use the donations to carry on making more resources to service the Alpha community. Now, I try and give you as much help uh, via this. Uh, the movies as possible but if you're wanting to have a one-on-one -on -one dialogue with uh, me, with me in forums uh, then you can become a patron of my patreon site for just a few dollars a month uh, I can talk to you you can send me messages and we can have a dialogue I also throw in a photo critique service uh, as part of that so you may want to uh, access that if you want to have a personal dialogue with me so I can help you fine-tune your Alpha workflows so you get the absolute best possible performance out of your Alpha camera. Okay, so I'm Mark Gaylor, I'm a Sony Imaging Ambassador. Thanks for watching. Just give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thanks.